Hey friends, Sean from Draft Therapy here, and on today's review for you, we're just going to try and make it through the holidays. Santa's Private Reserve 2021 Kringle Crusher is an 8.3% strong ale from Rogue Ales in Newport, Oregon. As hard as it is to believe, Christmas is right around the corner, and between supply chain issues and chip shortages, sometimes it's just nice to sit back and relax with a Christmas-themed beer. Now, this is the first time I'm going to be looking at a rogue ale on the channel, so let's dig into this one. But first, I'd like to thank my executive producers, Brian Kramer, David Jeffries, Chad Shirk, and Cam Freeman, for helping to bring this review to you today. If you'd like to become a producer, help out the channel, or maybe just throw me a couple bucks and buy me a beer. Take a look at my Patreon at patreon.drafttherapy.com, where you can get early access to these videos and a few other special perks available only to patrons, including some, some giveaways. Got some giveaways going on. So let's take a look at this can. We'll start from the front. It has a, a black kind of front. Well, I mean, I guess it's mostly black. It says across the top in red, dedicated to surviving the holidays. And under that, it says rogue with the red star in the middle. Santa's Private Reserve 2021 Kringle Crusher, an ale with natural vanilla flavor aged on oak rum barrel chips. This is one pint. It has a Santa Claus, probably the Santa Claus, if you had to ask me, doing like an atomic, uh, atomic elbow drop a la Randy Macho Man Savage, perhaps on a Krampus looking character laying down with a bunch of elves in the background in the spotlight. There's a couple deer, reindeer other good stuff. If we turn it to the side here, it says, Dare, Risk, Dream. When Santa caught Krampus stealing his beloved rum balls, he offered Krampus a choice. Either give him back or wrestle him for him. Krampus, blinded by the allure of the delicious sweet, chose to face Santa in the ring. A poor choice, as not even a full minute into the fight, Santa knocked Krampus down and landed a devastating elbow drop. Krampus, writhing in pain, conceded the match and handed over the rum balls. The elbow drop, forever known as the Kringle Crusher, and Santa's love for the confection are the inspiration for this year's Santa's Private Reserve. Enjoy. It has a star here on the label. It tells you where it's kind of leaning towards. It says it's leaning towards malt, a little bit towards oak, a lot towards vanilla. And underneath, I'm guessing this is a food pairing. It says au gratin potatoes, honey glazed ham, and rum balls. On the side here, it has the Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter uh, handle information. Then it says Santa's Private Reserve hashtag. Alcohol, 8.3% alcohol by volume, 33 IBU, 58 SRM, and then brewed by Rogue Ales in Newport, Oregon, established in 1988, and all the good information, all the, the government warning, etc., etc. On the bottom, this says, want to chat, text us, has a number, it's a little bit smudged, but this one looks like it was canned on September 1st, 2021. This is probably, you're probably going to see this either the week of Thanksgiving or the week before, so, you know, about that time. So I'm going to grab my Draft Therapy Tiku glass here. We're going to crack it, put a nose on the can, and talk about it from there. Ooh. A little bit of a, a little bit of a crack there. Let's put a nose on it. Ooh, that smells very, uh, very alcoholy. Actually, pretty strong. Maybe a bit of a rum, a rum aroma on the nose. A little bit of a vanilla. Let's go ahead and pour it. Coming up pretty dark. I was expecting it to be maybe even a little bit lighter. It is fairly transparent. It looks like cola pouring, pouring out of the can here. And I'm going to slow it down a little bit. I have a little bit left in this can. I'm going to say this has about a finger of head, maybe a little bit over a finger, a little bit off white head, just really shading just slightly towards tan, but it is a lot of compact bubbles. If we hold it up to the light here, it is very dark. Across the bottom here, I can see a little bit of a kind of brownish. It's a little bit kind of clear in the bulb, but can't see through it. Not happening. And if I put a better nose here on the glass, pretty much the same aroma I was getting out of the can itself. A little bit of a vanilla. Maybe a little bit of an alcohol kind of bite in just the nose. And I would say... Uh, you can tell it's barrel aged. Maybe there's a little bit of a kind of an oaky, rummy kind of characteristic coming through there. So let's let's go ahead and try this one out. Cheers. We'll talk about the mouthfeel first. The mouthfeel's fairly light. It's not crisp and it's not really heavy. It doesn't. It's kind of like right in between light and medium. It's very easy drinking. For 8.3%, it goes down very, very smooth, very quick. 
Let's pour a little bit more in here and then we'll talk about the taste because there's a lot going on with the taste here. Up front, it has a, a nice kind of sweetness to it, a little bit of a malty sweetness, but it is kind of intermingled with this oakiness. There's like a barrel characteristic to it on the up front. That kind of sweet vanilla and maltiness kind of comes through. And then even after that, you get more of that kind of oak characteristic. It's very woodsy, has a really woodsy kind of drying finish to it. Um, so yeah, you get the sweetness, you get the vanilla, you get the malt, you get it right on the upfront. But again, it's mixed in with that kind of oak barrel, maybe a little bit of a kind of rum characteristic to it. Not much, but I, I would almost attribute the vanilla to that because it has that bit of a vanilla sweetness up front. There is a little bit of a, almost a cola kind of flavor coming through there too in the sweetness. Um, but yeah, so you're getting that oak up front. You're getting that, that vanilla, that malt, that bit of cola kind of sweetness on the swallow, on the finish. It kind of dries out with that oak characteristic with those oak chips. You can tell that there's like a, a woodsy, oaky kind of character in there. Maybe a little bit of a rum uh, flavor in there. Again, I think a lot of that has to do, the vanilla kind of influences that. And also that cola kind of taste kind of pushes you towards that rum kind of taste a little bit. And then on the finish, that the, those oak chips, those rum uh, oak chips really dry out your, your tongue. And, it, you know, it's like you feel like you, you need to take another drink because it has dried out your mouth. And that's always a genius thing, in my opinion, when you get to that point where, you know, you take the drink, it's over. And you're kind of sitting there and your mouth kind of, you, you know, your tongue dries out a little bit and you're like, I need to take another drink. This is, it's deceiving because it's not super high. It's not boozy by any means, but it just has that feeling like while you don't really taste a lot of booziness on the, on the flavor profile, it just kind of hits you in this way. I think it's because that, that oak characteristic that's in there, those oak chips are in there. It gives you this feeling that it's higher ABV. I mean, it's 8.3%. So that's not nothing, right? That That's pretty high, but it almost lends to this feeling that it's even higher than that. As it warms, I feel like the sweetness, I mean, it's not, obviously it hasn't been sitting here all night or anything, but as it warms, that sweetness kind of pushes a little bit more. You get a little, it opens up a little bit more. You get a little bit more of this kind of, the oakiness kind of subsides on the back end. It doesn't taste so... It's not so overpowered by those oak chips, but it, that sweetness kind of opens up, comes a little bit through a little bit more. I do feel like I'm getting a little bit more of a rum characteristic now. As it's kind of sat here and gotten a chance to breathe. Um, I don't know if this would be particularly one that I would go after after as like a as like a Christmas kind of themed beer, but I can tell you it does very well match. It matches very well with those fall kind of all kind of flavors you'd think of that maltiness is really nice that vanilla is really nice that cola flavor comes through really nice and you get that dryness with the rum again i don't know if it's necessarily something i would consider and think about christmas so much but it definitely has those fall and winter flavors in mind all right friends that has been kringle crusher from rogue ales have you had this one or do you have a favorite christmas time or maybe christmas themed beer let me know in the comments down below while you're down there if you like beer you might want to subscribe and click that bell i'm here talking about beer twice a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays. It's all for free for viewers just like you. And you might miss your newest favorite if you're not subscribed and getting those notifications. You might be able to avoid a clunker if you are getting those notifications and you're subscribed. So until next time, I'm Sean from Draft Therapy. Thanks for stopping by. Remember, drink craft beer, support your local breweries. These guys are in Newport, Oregon. And most importantly, don't forget to treat yourself with a little Draft Therapy. Thanks for watching, everybody. Cheers.